everyone in YouTube land. This is part two of my Addie doll collection video. And so I left off saying that what sparked me to do this video was because of the Meet Claudie, an American Girl hardcover book. And uh, I want to show you guys, for those of you who haven't seen the hardcover book, for those of us collectors, we were very excited for this, um, for this girl, um, this, this new historical doll and character to come out. And I don't mean to sound disrespectful by calling her a girl, uh, because she does have a name, and uh, this is Claudie. And um, I picked up the hardcover book because I just knew that that was something I wanted uh, before I really dove into the Claudie collection. But one thing about the hardcover book, and I'm not sure if the Dolls Meat book has this, but um, this is a little excerpt um, for the author's point of view or from the author's point of view about her first Addie doll. And I wanted to show you guys how she ended up getting uh, what is considered in the doll world a collector's transitional Addie doll, uh, where her face mold is similar to not the fuller uh, 1993 version of Addie, but more so of this transitional Addie. So um, her doll is very similar to the transitional Addie doll that I have, uh, which must mean that she got her around the early 2000s. So um, I really do like this excerpt because it does talk about the original Meet Addie book, the hardcover, and how she wanted to really focus on that. Um, and the differences between the first illustrator and the second illustrator. So this is kind of like the, the later illustrations of Addie, which are, of course are very different from the first edition illustrations of how um, Addie was perceived and viewed. So speaking of the second illustrator's um, vision of Addie, this is a collection of Addie books one through six that shows uh, the second version of Addie and her pictures, which are quite different from the first illustrator's vision of uh, Addie and her family. So I'll take you through that. So again, this is my copy of the collection. So I'll start backwards. So this is Changes for Addie, book six, and see how it gives you more of a background image. Addie saves the day, her original dress for this, um, this collection, as well as her garden accessories. See the basket and the produce, and see how it has a little background of the carnival. Happy birthday, Addie. So again, you're getting the background of what her kitchen might have looked like back in the 1860s. Addie's surprise, a Christmas story. So you get the church background and the pews. Addie learns a lesson, a school story. Um, so you get these illustrations, Abraham Lincoln right here, what she might have been learning on the chalkboard, some of her accessories that American Girls sold um, in the mid-2000s or late 1990s. And 1864, Meet Addie, American Girl. And if you turn it over on the back, it shows you the whole collection. So speaking of the whole collection, um, I do have the same kind of concept for Addie's Pastimes, where I have all the books. The only one that I took out, I did end up taking out a book, so that's the space. But I ended up getting Addie's Cookbook, 
the craft book, paper dolls, and the theater kit. Um, another thing that I have on top of the Addie's collection is the stationery. And that's really nice because you get stickers. And remember how I was telling you guys of the first illustrator and her version of Addie? Well, these illustrations are very different from what I just showed you. So you can see how um, the stationery set has not only her profile or her silhouette, but it also says Pleasant Company. And it gives you an idea of how to write a letter the way Addie would have written it. And again, you're going back to the older illustrations of how the illustrator viewed Addie and her family. And so the story is that the illustrator had a fault. The first illustrator had a falling out with Pleasant Roland and how she viewed um, slavery in her mind that did not technically um, mesh well with that's how the story goes I think it was published in an article so I'm only repeating what the article said um, that somehow her vision did not quite match up with Pleasant Roland's vision and when you have a boss that is Pleasant Roland you have to go with what your boss wants and likes regardless of what your vision is and that's the hard part of being an author an illustrator um, a worker whatever you want to call it uh, you're always going to have a boss who feels like they know more and because Pleasant Rowland was the president at the time she was the CEO she was the the head or so to speak the cream um, at the top you know you kind of have to go with the boss's vision. And so whether or not I agree with uh, Pleasant Roland or the illustrator, the first illustrator, I do appreciate the first illustrator's vision of um, Addie's story. So this is a treasury of African-American Christmas stories. And I always like to pair this with Addie because you're getting um, African-American point of view, POV, which is... Uh, stories told from their point of view and not what someone deems as what African Americans uh, felt or might have been thinking. This is Christmas in Pennsylvania and it kind of gives a history of what Christmas was like back in Pennsylvania and because Addie and her family relocated to Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, uh, like so many African-American families from the South did um, to escape slavery at times, um, even to have a better life during uh, po the post-war era um, of the Emancipation Proclamation or Civil War and Reconstruction. Um, so this is like a good... This is a good um, source if you want to know what Christmas was like when Addie probably first settled in Pennsylvania with her mother. Um, if you didn't get enough of it from the Christmas story that um, American Girl came out with. And this one I always love, Christmas in the Big House, because I love the author Patricia McKissack. And um, I like her, her research and her, like I said, point of view and all the love and care that went into a book like this to talk about what slavery must have been like during the Christmas season. So even though you can go to old plantations and get an idea of what Christmas was like at a plantation uh, in Colonial Williamsburg or a place like that, or even at Montpelier, um, or Monticello, they give little tours of what Christmas was like, but they never tell it from the slave's perspective, and that's what's lacking. Um, so maybe nowadays they're doing that, but I remember going to places like that as a kid on field trips, and they never did it from the slave's perspective. So 
um, these are some good books that go with Addie's collection. Okay, so again, this is part two of my Addie collection. I hope you guys did enjoy uh, learning a little bit about Addie's background and story. I wish I could do a little bit more about her collection and what I have for her collection, but that would be another 20 minute video that I just don't have time to film. So um, I wanted to give you guys just an idea of how much I love Addie and how much I do appreciate American Girl taking a chance at recreating um, Addie's story for us to enjoy no matter what's going on politically. Um, I always feel like American history is important to learn in its entirety. And that includes American slavery, unfortunately. But when I look at Addie's story, um, Addie's story is so close to my family's story and it's so close to my heart that even when I think about these um, Caucasian dolls, Kirsten, Molly, and Samantha, as much as I love their story, Kirsten's especially, um, I do have a soft spot when it comes to Addie's story and how close it is to my family's history. So um, that's just a little bit of my Addie doll collection and a lot of the new books and old books that I have that are part of Addie's American Girl Pleasant Company collection. All right, talk to you guys later. Um, if you like the content and you like the videos, go ahead and like and subscribe to my channel. Um, again, I make very homely, old school videos. Uh, I'm not really in love with the lighting and the pizzazz of studio production videos on YouTube. I pretty much love the old way of recording my doll collection. So if you guys can put up with it and if you love it, uh, go ahead and like and subscribe and I'll talk to you guys later.